Hi and welcome to another episode of Isup's E-Lessons. Today we'll be looking at the grade 12 poem Funeral Blues. Funeral Blues was written by W.H. Auden, another British poet, so we will see lots of references to British life in this poem. If you find these videos helpful, please click subscribe on the button below this video. If we look at the title, the word funeral means a ceremony or service after a person's death. It is where we pay respects before burial. And the word blues is a feeling of sadness, but it can also refer to a type of music that is slow and melancholic. So basically, the title Funeral Blues refers to a sad song about the death of a loved one. If we look at the first stanza, it says, Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. So the first line, stop all the clocks, it's almost as though it's asking to stop time itself. So this is a hyperbole, it's an exaggeration, because it's not possible to stop all the clocks. But it expresses the idea that the speaker wants time to stop. Cut off the telephone expresses that the speaker wants all communication to stop. So once again, a hyperbole. So in stanza one, we see words like stop, cut off, prevent, silence. And all of these are commands, as though the speaker is trying to gain control of life after the death of someone which he has no control over. So we see that in lines one to three, the speaker wants life to stop in order to honor death. And it's almost as though he can't understand how the world can keep going as though nothing has changed when everything has changed for him. If we take a closer look at line three, the word muffled here means to be wrapped up so that the sound can't be heard clearly. But the muffled drum here is a reference to a funeral march. Line four says, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. The speaker is readying himself for the funeral procession. It's almost as though he steals himself to face the world without this loved one who he has lost. If we look at stanza two, it says, let the aeroplane circle moaning overhead. In line five, we see personification because aeroplanes are given the ability to moan. This mirrors the speaker's pain because we know that moaning is kind of a cry of grief. And this is an example of onomeropia because it mimics the painful sound of grief. If we look at line six, it says scribbling on the sky. And so the word scribbling has connotations of anger as though this is being written carelessly and out of anger. And the message he wants to be written in the sky is he is dead. And we see that each word here is capitalized to show a sense of finality. And the word he here really gives the poem a universal element because it could apply to anyone who has lost someone. It also helps to show the difference between public and private life that as much as the speaker wants the world to stand still, he still wants some privacy as he mourns his loved one. Line seven goes on to tell us, he says, put crepe bows round the white necks of the public doves. So crepe is a type of light crinkled fabric and historically, black armbands were made from this material to signify mourning. So this is why he wants black bows to be tied on each of the doves outside to show that all the doves are mourning his loss. And line 8 goes on to say, let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. Once again, black is a symbol of grief and it's as though he wants the public to acknowledge his loss. If we move on to stanza 3, it says he was my north, my south, my east, my west. This is quite an interesting metaphor where the deceased is compared to a compass that gave the speaker's life direction. He goes on to say, my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. So we see lots of references to time here. And this is to express the idea that the deceased filled the speaker's time. It gave it meaning, gave it a source of calm. Lots of metaphors in stanza three. We see that he goes on to say, my talk and my song. So this tells us that the, the deceased provided conversation, but also joy to the speaker's life. We see in line 12 that he says, I thought love would last forever. And forever is kind of a romantic ideal. It's not realistic. It's not something that actually happens in the real world. And this is what the speaker realizes when he says, I was wrong. So we see a very defeated tone where the speaker must accept this harsh reality that death has taken his love. So stanza three shows us a personal impact and that the speaker's life will never be the same without the person he has lost. Stanza four goes on to say, the stars are not wanted now, put out every one, pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. 
So once again, we see a hyperbole here, where the speaker wants the world to be plunged into darkness to reflect his loss. The stars, the moon, the sun, these all represent romantic imagery. And all of this is too painful for the speaker to bear right now, which is why he wants it gone. In line 14, we see reference to the moon and the sun, and this represents night and day. So once again, we see another plea that time should stand still, similar to the one we saw in stanza 1. Okay, in line 15, the speaker says, pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. So we see that he wants natural beauty to cease because the speaker cannot appreciate it without the deceased. All right, so line 15 has another hyperbole because it's not possible to get rid of all the natural beauty in the world. And the last line of the poem says, for nothing now can ever come to any good. So we see that it ends on quite a hopeless note. The imagery in this poem is quite interesting especially to see how the speaker projects his grief into different facets of life from his immediate surroundings to his broader surroundings. So in stanza one, he starts off with his immediate surroundings. He deals with things like the phones and the dogs and everything around him that he's trying to silence and stop. In stanza two, he moves on to broader surroundings. So we see things like planes, the birds, the traffic officers, so things that we would see out in public. In stanza three, he comes back inwards towards his personal life and tells us how his daily life will be affected without the deceased. And then stanza four goes on to a, a much broader spectrum, the heavens, referring to the sun, the moon, the stars, and suggests that the universe is affected by the death of his beloved. So if we take a look at the theme, the poem is an elegy. It is a lament for the dead. So the themes here are death, grieving, but also love, especially love that is lost, love that he thought would be eternal, but is not everlasting. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe and follow me on social media.